so we have been uh, having look at differential equations ordinary differential equations uh, with initial value specified and we have looked at different methods of different numerical schemes of solving ordinary differential equations subject to initial conditions then we also had some introduction to how does one do analysis of convergence convergence of uh, error between the true solution and the approximate solution and finally we saw one application of using a initial value problem solver for solving a boundary value problem ordinary differential equation boundary value problem so this was shooting method and towards the end i also mentioned something about stiff differential equations so stiff differential equations are the ones in which uh, different variables have different time scales so some variables are acting on a fast time scale some variables are acting on a slow time scale and that gives difficulties in choosing uh, integration interval so convergence and integration interval choice of integration interval were tightly coupled and we had to uh, look at uh, eigen values of the jacobian matrix to get some clues into how to choose integration step size we also looked at a fix that is variable step size method by which when we do not know how to choose the integration step size we could get over the difficulties so today i just want to briefly touch upon one very very important up topic uh, this is solving differential algebraic systems or these are popularly known as daes in fact in real chemical engineering applications you are more likely to encounter differential algebraic systems than uh, pure algebraic or pure uh, differential systems because in many situations uh, some phenomena have to be modeled as uh algebraic algebraic constraints okay a classic example would be multi component flash uh so an isothermal multi component flash i am just reducing the complexity by taking isothermal flash when you are doing design of isothermal flash you are typically concerned about the steady state operation when you are looking only at the steady state operation you only have to worry about algebraic equations there are no derivatives coming into the picture but if i want to simulate uh dynamics associated with this flash okay a more complex problem of course will be distillation column flash is only one tray you know like uh, a model of the flash might resemble just one tray uh but just to give you an idea here of how differential algebraic systems will arise uh you know i'm just going to write down 
differential equations and algebraic equations under the assumption that temperature is specified and constant. So, So, this is the component balance for the ith component. Okay. Uh, These are overall mass balance, component balance. Okay, uh, what is overall mass for ith component? Then total mass, liquid liquid mass plus vapor mass. Then you have this y i is equal to k i x i thermodynamic relationships. I am just writing this in the abstract way. There is some thermodynamic model for computing k i, k i values okay? and then the relationship between y i and x i is given by this. This is the thermodynamic model representation. Each k i will be found by some thermodynamic model. Okay? Well, then you have total volume in the flash. You will have models for the density in the liquid phase, density in the vapor phase. Density in the liquid phase will be function of composition, pressure, temperature. Okay, and so is the case for the vapor phase, vapor phase density. And then you will have two uh, basic composition equations: sigma x i equal to one, sigma y i equal to one. Or you can combine them and say that sigma x i minus sigma y i is equal to 0. Remember I just I just want to do dynamic simulation of the isothermal flash. Okay? So, I cannot I cannot ignore the two dynamic terms or two differential equations that I get not two differential equations I am sorry. If I have n components there will be n plus 1 differential equations the n components will be n plus 1 differential equation 1 for each component balance and so there are n components so n n differential equations for each component plus 1 overall mass balance okay so there are n plus n plus 1 differential equations and many more algebraic equations some of these algebraic equations you might be able to eliminate and substitute but not all okay in such cases in when you cannot eliminate all the variables you will get a differential algebraic system okay and then i am just writing two more equations you have to write a equation for the liquid flow out liquid flow out will be function of the mass here if it is a gravity kind of flow and vapor flow out will be function of pressure minus pressure in minus pressure out here also it will be function of pressure in minus pressure out so i am just writing a general equation here l minus
these are the two flow equations okay now the variables that are specified in this particular case these correspond to t f z v and p out okay these are the variables which have been specified isothermal flash so t is specified okay v is specified because you are designed the flash for a certain uh, v or you want to keep the v constant okay then feed conditions are specified and the pressure out is specified so these things are specified and then you want to actually solve this coupled differential algebraic equations together okay a typical problem uh, in chemical engineering where if you have a reaction occurring there with two feeds coming in becomes more complex okay you have conversion from one to another and then you have to maintain uh, quite likely that your products are gas phase and the reactants are liquid phase so uh, a very common scenario uh, and then you are drawing the product so uh, differential equations and algebraic equations are coupled and this is what we have to solve together okay so just algebraic equations just differential equations uh, these situations arise only in certain cases but if you are doing dynamic simulations more often than not you get into dae systems okay other example i had given previously of dae systems was uh, orthogonal collocation it is not necessary that when we just get dae systems you get dae systems when you get uh, when you are solving only dynamics if you remember tubular reactor with axial mixing tram problem okay uh when we discretize this problem in space okay um using orthogonal collocations the boundary conditions are algebraic conditions okay of course in that particular problem was dynamics of tram but uh if you were to do solve the laplace equation by method of lines okay so you have differential equations okay in one direction in the other direction you have discretized okay and you might get algebraic conditions so dae's need not arise strictly when you have time it can arise you have only uh, two special coordinates and you are discretizing in one special coordinate you are solving as a od in the other other coordinate so it can arise in some other context not just time simulations but in time simulations quite often you get differential algebraic systems so uh solving differential algebraic systems is much more complex than solving just the differential systems or algebraic systems okay and you should know at least something about them so the idea of this one lecture is to give you a very very brief introduction to some of the issues that are involved in solving uh dais okay what i'm going to do is uh as i said just touch the tip of the iceberg but you should know that there exist separate methods for solving uh, dais and also toolbox like the toolbox in matlab or some other thing like scilab would have solvers which can handle dais matlab has a solver 15 od 15s uh s stands for stiff so od 15s solves uh you know uh differential algebraic equations solves equation simultaneously uh so now let me abstract this let me uh well the most general form of differential algebraic equations i can write as f y y prime t equal to 0 okay where y is a vector y is a vector and 
you have some coupled equations of derivatives and algebraic so some of these could be algebraic states some of these could be uh, differential states what i mean by algebraic states and differential states uh, we often write what is called as semi explicit form we often deal with what is called a semi explicit form the semi explicit form is dx by dt is equal to uh, well let's use a little bit of a different notation here let's let's make this capital g and because we have been using f for derivative x z t and uh no one minute not g we'll use here h h of h is some nonlinear function of y y prime and t and then i can write a semi explicit form which is zero equal to g of x z okay the flash equation you can rearrange into this semi explicit form dx by dt is equal to f x z t okay and 0 is equal to g of x z where x we call as differential variables and z we call as algebraic variables differential variables as in you get dx by dt terms okay you get dx by dt term algebraic variables because in the raw form you do not get derivatives of z okay in the raw form you do not get derivatives of z you may have to find out derivatives of z for some reason we will come to that ok but right now uh, we are in this lecture we are going to look at this simplified form most of the cases it can be most of the cases that we encounter can be written into this form ok and then we want to solve them simultaneously ok now you can appreciate here uh, that uh, these are relatively difficult because initial condition for a ODE initial value problem okay you can specify an arbitrary initial condition here you cannot specify an arbitrary initial condition the initial condition must satisfy this constraint the nonlinear algebraic linear or nonlinear generally in chemical engineering problems these constraints will be nonlinear there are nonlinear algebraic constraints this must be met by the initial condition on x so you have to give an initial condition on x and z which satisfies this constraint that is very very important ok and as you march in time ok at all times this constraint has to be satisfied ok so solving DA is, is a scale more difficult ok in this classification so this this particular form is called as fully implicit this particular form is called as fully implicit whereas this is called as semi explicit form and in this x we call as differential variables and z are and of course y is nothing but x z put together ok y is nothing but x z put together actually uh, the semi implicit form can be the semi implicit form can be written uh, in the uh, the in the fully implicit form if you take this definition ok if you take this definition then you can convert semi implicit form into so that is not really a so we will only look at semi implicit form to simplify our life now how do you solve this ok so uh, solution approaches I would
one is called as nested approach okay and the other one is called as simultaneous approach so in the nested approach so first thing we do here is Okay. So, basically we get z of okay. the first approach is that given x n you solve for this and And the next step would be Okay. Now, what it means is that what it means when you are solving this differential equation, you are going from uh, n to n plus 1. Internally, when you are computing your function derivative, okay, you may have to solve every time inside you may have to call Newton Raphson method or Newton's method. Okay. Within your function evaluations, suppose you are doing Runge-Kutta. In Runge-Kutta, you have to do evaluations of the function at intermediate points okay at each intermediate point when you do when you do calculations okay you will have to solve for z xn okay so you will have to solve for you need you need a you need an explicit way of um, or you need an implicit function uh, so this this approach requires this approach requires z to be obtained as a function of x internally every time you know in a let's say Runge kutta if you uh, find an intermediate x for that x you have to compute corresponding z and then proceed you cannot do so internally every time you have to compute uh, or you have to solve the algebraic equations every time okay so that is one approach Okay. The second approach is simultaneous approach. The second approach is the simultaneous approach. In the simultaneous approach, you use an implicit method. Okay use an implicit method to solve uh, the differential algebraic equations together. So, here I, I would say Simon using an implicit multi step solver okay for example simplest implicit multi step solver would be uh, 
um, you know implicit Euler ok implicit Euler in implicit Euler what I can do is I can solve for x n plus 1 minus minus x n minus f x n z n equal to 0 and oh sorry this is uh, implicit method. So, x n plus 1 z n plus 1 equal to 0 and g x the simplest implicit solver would be implicit Euler ok uh, h times right h is my integration step size h times h times this ok. So, this is my this is my simplest method implicit method see what is the advantage here advantage here is that both algebraic equations and differential equations get solved simultaneously and you get when you start from when you start from x and z n which are consistent you get x n plus 1 z n plus 1 ok automatically x n when you are going to the new point x n plus 1 z n plus 1 they are consistent because you are making sure this happens when you march again again x n plus 2 z n plus 2 are consistent with the algebraic equations ok. So, implicit Euler and how do you solve this if this g is h f is a nonlinear function you have to solve this using Newton's method or some nonlinear algebraic e equation solver. So, this you have to treat them as a simultaneous this is this is these two equations have to be solved simultaneously x n is known to you x n plus 1 is not known z n plus 1 is not known you have to solve them simultaneously and then ok uh, every time you solve you march in time you get consistent solutions ok the other general class of multi step methods which are used here they are called as backward difference solver BDF solver more popularly known as BDF ok. So, these are in our multi step parlance these are methods of x n plus 1 is equal to h beta minus 1 f See, we had earlier seen Adams Moulton, Gears algorithm, predictor corrector. So, this is the class of this is a general multi step algorithm. Here, we do not use, we only use one derivative that is f n plus 1, ok, and all past x values, ok. And then here, you solve this together with g of. So, we solve this equation and this equation simultaneously 
okay we solve this equation simultaneously so the simplest example of this type is implicit euler a bdf solver backward difference of uh, formulae these are called as bdf formulae okay the nice thing is that you have xn plus 1 zn plus 1 appearing in derivative and here okay and then uh, only use past x okay we are only using past x values by the way uh, uh, some of you had this question about uh, if you have multi step methods how do you initialize because in multi step methods you need suppose the p step method you need first p values right so one one approach suggested uh, uh, by petzold and asher uh, a very good there is a very good book on ordinary differential equations by petzold and asher so they say that you start uh, for a p step method you know you start uh, one with you know euler method then two step method then three step method four step method so for for first p steps you use one to p minus one step methods generate the initial points after that you continue using p step method okay so that is one way of initializing okay so this backward difference formula so just to give you a um, example of this would be x n plus 1 is equal to 2/3 f so this is one of the backward difference formula and then you can write more you can get this from the textbook or you can derive you know how to derive this bdf formula you'll be able to derive so uh, we are only going to use the derivative fn plus 1 and all x values from xn to xn minus p okay you can derive this you can derive this coefficients so likewise there are many methods okay the other way of solving uh, another way of solving this uh differential algebraic equations i am not going to do it on the board because uh we have done orthogonal collocations quite a bit on detail but other way of solving is orthogonal collocations what is the advantage of orthogonal collocations it converts a differential equation into algebraic equations then you can club the algebraic equation coming from orthogonal collocation discretization and algebraic equation which you have here and solve it together okay solve it together using newton's method so uh, advantage of orthogonal collocations is to conversion to uh, algebraic equations and then everything can be solved as one set of algebraic problem okay so that i'm just leaving it to you to uh, work out yourself maybe in the exam or otherwise when it comes to uh, so uh these equations can be solved using these uh bdf approaches or uh using something like runge kutta uh if you have you know implicit function z as a implicit function of x then you can solve it using uh you know you can call internally inside your runge kutta you can call Newton's method, and then solve it. Uh, so the other way of solving this, but solving these becomes much more complex than just solving the ODEs, because in the function evaluation itself, we have to call, you know, uh, algebraic equation solver, which could be non-linear. So iteration it, inside iterations, and so on. So it can become quite complex. Okay. Now, unfortunately, just uh, these equations, you know. um it's not just unfortunately just using these methods for solving this because there are many other issues that come up when you have differential and algebraic systems together one of the issue that you must know is index of a differential algebraic system okay and what is difficult to solve is high index problem okay uh, we will define what is index of a differential algebraic system index one systems are easy to solve 
high index systems are difficult to solve and you have to do some tricks the main thing is main thing is that when you have a differential algebraic system you have to have the initial con condition consistent okay that is x not and z not should satisfy the algebraic constraint that is very very important okay there is a textbook by Asher and Petzold uh, on ordinary differential equations, which a very good textbook, which gives a very good mix of uh, algorithms and theory, uh, talks in detail about uh, differential algebraic solvers. There is a separate chapter dedicated to these systems, and then uh, Petzold has developed. Uh, a software which is very very commonly used i think it's a freeware that is called dassl dassel okay differential algebraic uh, equation solver called dassel which is uh, you can i think i think this is a freeware it's a fortran program you can download and then uh, call convert into a matlab code and call it through matlab and you can use at least some uh, small dimensional systems can be handled now, what is the index? Okay, the index is number of times you should differentiate the algebraic equations. Okay, to get a set of ordinary differential equations, ODEs. Okay, now you might say, well, what is so? Looks like you can convert the system into set of ODEs, and then you can solve it using ODE solver. The problem is when you have algebraic equations. Okay, which means some derivatives are zero all the time. Okay, this resulting system will be highly stiff system. It's not at all easy to solve. This will be a stiff system. Though, though theoretically you can do this, it will be a stiff system because uh, typically when you arrive at differential algebraic system of equations, you have chosen to neglect certain time derivatives because those time, uh, the time scale on which those derivatives operate are very very small. You neglect the time, and you just look at the algebraic uh, constraints. So even though on paper you can do this by repeatedly differentiating the algebraic uh, constraints, this coupled set of equations will be difficult to solve. Anyway, so number of times you have to do differentiation to arrive at uh, a set of differential equations is called as index. And in general, index 1 problems are easy to solve. Okay, if you differentiate the algebraic constraints only once, and uh, uh, if you can convert them into 
set of uh, differential equations, great. If you cannot index two systems, okay, or index three systems or high index systems uh, are difficult to solve, very, very difficult to solve. And then you have to convert them. Typically, the approach taken is to convert a high index system into a low index or index one system and then solve it as an index one system. Okay. Let us look at an example where we get a high index problem. I will take a simple uh, system, just a mixing tank. Okay. So, V is the volume here, okay. V is the volume, and one differential equation okay and okay now for this particular problem for this particular problem i'll just show you two faces of this problem okay in one case you can solve it as an ode in other case it turns out to be a differential algebraic system with index 2 okay so one one way is One way is you know uh, C zero t inlet concentration is equal to some function beta t specified, okay, and then initial value of C zero is specified of concentration inside the tank is specified. Simple ODE problem, okay. You substitute this is a DAE, but then you know you can substitute for beta t here, and you are given initial condition. It becomes one ODE. You can solve it. It's very very easy problem. Okay, the second one, actually, the other problem. Okay, so this one, the first one is uh, very very simple. Uh, uh, DAE that is DC by DT is equal to is equal to C not T minus C T by tau and C zero T minus beta T equal to zero. So this is a DAE and substitute for beta. You can solve this using an ODE solver. Not at all an issue. Uh, simple index one system. Not uh, not at all difficult to solve. The second one here is. Earlier, I had specified C not inlet condition, and I wanted to do simulation. Okay, now I want to specify C of t. Okay, I want to specify C of t as a function of beta t, as some function specified function of time is equal to beta t. Beta t is generic way of writing a specified function. I am just putting this as a beta t. <coughs> okay, see now. Now I have to solve for DC by DT is equal to okay. 
it's very very important how I choose the initial condition here. This is an this is an example in which I have specified C T. Okay, I have specified C T. Okay, uh, this problem, this differential algebraic system, it turns out to be an index two system, and this is much more difficult to difficult to solve. So well, I'll just uh, quickly write down the solution, and then we'll also look at uh, we'll 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 also look at uh, why it is index two system. Uh, that uh, uh, maybe we have to do it in the next class. Uh, but the solution for this problem is. You can see that solution to this problem, solution to this problem will not be C T, C T has been specified, solution to this problem will be C naught T, the inlet profile, okay. Though this is a concocted problem, okay, it actually tells you something uh, that is intrinsic, uh, difficult about DAEs. Well, you might wonder where do you uh, get this problem? For example, when I am doing control, I am specifying how should the output behave, I want to find out an input. Okay. In the control problem, I am specifying how the, the controlled variable should behave and then I want to reconstruct the input that will give me that particular controlled output. Okay. So, we will continue analyzing this particular system, we will see that uh, this particular system turns out to be an index 2 system and then uh, we have to solve it by uh, doing some some more manipulations. It's very very important that the initial conditions are consistent. If you give a wrong initial condition, you can get get into trouble here.